Okay, let's go to quiz seven, question three. Avery and Otis borrowed $54,000 at 6.8% compounded semi-annually as a second mortgage loan against their current home. Repayment amount is $2,950 at the end of every three months. How many payments are required to repay the loan? Okay, let's go now. So the payments are every at the end of every three months. So that means that PY is four, or we can indeed enter it as four. Now the compounding is semi-annually, so that means CY is two. Enter and we can check. CY is four and CY is two, and we get out of that menu. <clears throat> All right, so now how many years, well, or how many payments in this case, you're looking to compute the value of N, so we'll pass over that for now. The interest rate is 6.8%. So let us input 6.8 for the interest rate. And the present value, well, that is the $54,000 right there. So 54000. And we put that in its present value. Okay, the payment is 2950 at the end of every three months. So 2950, let's make it negative because we're paying. And zero would be for the future value so that the mortgage will be paid off or the amount that's borrowed in this case, 54,000. So let us compute N and N turns out to be 22.073.7605. Now we cannot have a 22.073 payment as number of payments. It has to be a whole number. So we round it up and in this case, we will put in 23. Okay, so we have calculated the number of payments. Now, we don't put 23 into the calculator, we leave the value for N as it has been computed. Now, use the given information to complete the amortization table below, all right? Determine the missing values for the first two payment intervals and the last two payment intervals, the to and the totals, meaning the totals are these numbers that are going for the total amount paid, the total interest paid, and of course the principal repaid. All right, now the principal repaid should indeed be this amount here, the 54,000, of course. If the 54,000 was borrowed, then 54,000 must be repaid, all right? So that has to go in there. Okay, so let's go now to the amortization menu. So for that, we click second TV and there in the amortization. The first payment is payment number one, all right? So P1 is one or we can indeed enter it, one, enter. And we, we can see P1 is equal to one and P2 is also equal to one. Now the balance remaining goes in here, so that's 51,960, 960.33, okay? Let's round it, 0.33, so there we are, $51,960.33. The next, Number is the principal. That's the amount that's repaid on the principal. So $2,039.67 has been repaid on the principal. How much interest has been paid? Well, the interest is $910.33. And you can see if we add these two, the principal repaid and the interest paid, it will give us the amount paid. All right? And now if we subtract this, the amount that was paid on the principal, which was indeed the $54,000, we subtract this number from this number, 
we will get this number right here. Okay, all right, next payment. Payment number two. So for P1, we put in the value of two, enter. And P2, we will also put in the value of two, enter. And the balance now is 49,886.27. Okay, the amount that was paid on the principal is 2,074.06. We're rounding to two decimal places. All right, the amount of interest paid was $875.94. Just ignore the negative sign and put a positive number in there. So those are the first two values. Now the number of payment is indeed 23. So this one here would be the 23rd payment. Okay, so this would be payment uh, number 23. Payment 23, correct, yes. And this one here would be payment number 22. Now, because remember the value for n was a decimal number, so there will be a 23rd payment, but that 23rd payment will not be as the same as the other 22, which were $2,950. So we will have to get at this 23rd payment eventually. All right, so let's go to payment number 22. This number here is for payment number 22 because this one is payment number 23. Now, if you like uppercase letters, we can put payment 23. All right, good. Okay, or we could say if we want to maybe put it more into the amortization kind of language, we will say that P1 is equal to 23 and the P2 will also be equal to 23, all right? And we will see what happens with that. Okay, so let's go back now. And so payment number 22. So let's clear that there, put in 22 for P1. Likewise, we put in 22 for P2. And we get the balance. The balance now is $215.60. We're rounding to two decimal places. All right, the amount paid on the, repaid on the principal is $2,897.52. And the amount of interest is $52.48. Okay, similarly, if we add these two numbers, that one, the principal repaid and the interest, we will get this number right here, the amount that was paid. Okay, so now we have to get to this last, payment. Now, how do we do it? That is what we need to find out. So let's put in 23 for P1 and likewise 23 for P2. Correct. Now the balance, as you see, it turns out to be negative. Negative 2,730.72 if we run that. All right. Now, that indeed is an overpayment. How do we know? Well, let's come out of here and let's recall N. N is 22.0737605. So the 23rd payment will, if we pay $2,950, it will be an overpayment. So let's go back into the amortization table and go after the balance. Now this is the amount that was overpaid. So what we need to do is to subtract 2,730.72 from 2,950. Now let's do that. We can come out of there and do it, or we could do it right here, but let's come out so that we're better off. So we could indeed recall the payment, and it's correct, 2,950, we make it positive. And we have to subtract that balance that we had. Now we will have to go back in there to find out what that balance was if we didn't make a note of it. Okay, sorry about that. Let's go back there. Uh, let's go around. Okay, I skip by. 
two. Okay, so let's take note of that. All right, so we come out of there and we have our 2,950. That was the amount that we would pay, all right, if you were paying a full payment. And then we subtract 2,730.72. And there we go. So that is the amount that has to be paid here. For the 23rd payment, the amount will be 219.28. Okay, so there we are. Now, how much of that is the principal repaid and how much is the interest? Well, we know that this amount has to be paid here. So if we were to put that amount in here, 215.65, and then if we subtract this number from this number, we should get this number here. So let's do that, 219.28, and then we subtract 215.65, and we get the amount of interest, $3.63. Okay. All right. So there we are. And we have the numbers. Now, like I told you, if if we if we wish, we could have done a little bit quicker, maybe a quicker way, and made this is negative. So if we decided to add uh, this amount, 2950, 2950 and we press equal, see we got 219.29, well, 28, sorry, 219.28, which is this number here. So we could have done it in there, but we chose not to do it, and that was quite okay. All right, so let's go back. Now we need the total, all right? The total amount paid, we could go and add all of this here, all right? But I will show you what happens. The total interest always works. So let's go into the amortization. So we go P1 and we put one. Okay, remember one now. P2 is 23, so we're going from payment number one to payment number 23, N is indeed the 23rd payment. Now let's skip by everything and go after the interest. Now the interest is indeed correct, 11,119.28. That is correct. Now if we take that number here, and we add this number here, we should get the total amount paid. Let's do it right here. We can add 54,000. Don't worry about it, that's INT there. We can go in there and I did something wrong. So let me do it properly. All right, I will show you, you can do it with that. What I didn't do was to make the interest positive. Now I add 54,000. And that should be correct. We know that that number was not correct. Now the number should be correct. 65,119.28. Now, of course, I could come out of here and add the numbers, these two numbers, and I should get this number right here. Now, these numbers hopefully are correct. We will check our answer now and see if it is all correct. So far, it's good. And there we are. That is correct. So that is seven question three, and that is how this question is done properly. Okay.